Boom shakalaka. What's up, guys? Randall here from Crypto Love, and I have the man, Jonathan from Red Pulse here. And today we are going to be talking about Neo's first ever ICO, Red Pulse. Jonathan, welcome. Thank you. Great yeah. to be here. Dude, it's a pleasure to have you. I am, uh, I am number one kind of starstruck just to be here with you, to oh. be honest, and uh, very grateful. So tell everyone out there about Red Pulse. What's going on with Red Pulse? Yeah, I would love to. You know, that's why I'm here, always helping to uh, spread the good word on Red Pulse. So what we are, what's our platform about? We are a tokenized research ecosystem covering China. And we've used our own cryptocurrency, the RPX, as a fair and transparent compensation mechanism for outside contributions of research. That sounds great. So you, you already had a working platform coming into the ICO. Mm -hmm. That's right. Correct? And yeah. so how did you... How did that work for you with the ICO? Yeah, so I, maybe a little bit of a backstory there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been operating as a business for up to close to three years, actually, at this point, uh, when we first started looking at the ICO. So we had a product, we had clients, big name clients, some of the top banks, asset managers, brokerages globally were using our research to better understand China. But there were two observations that we made as we were building this business. Number one, unfortunately, most of these financial institutions, they weren't willing to pay for generic research anymore. You know, they get a lot of free stuff from, from Bloomberg, from Financial Times, from other service providers, and it became really difficult to sell them on this sort of more niche research covering China. Now, the second observation, perhaps much more optimistically, is that these financial professionals were willing to pay for custom research. You know, so something that would give them an edge, something that would give them access to subject matter experts, to industry insights, that was something that they were willing to pay for and, in fact, pay a lot for. So considering these two observations, we stumbled across, and I have to give credit where credit's due, a website called Steemit. Mm -hmm. And so Steemit pioneered this idea of creating this, this content platform, yet using cryptocurrency as a compensation mechanism. So there's some aspects of that that we borrowed. But in our case, what we're looking to do is to create a professionalized content platform, focusing on research insights from a audience of experts that are then disseminated to finance professionals that need it. That's awesome. So another question that I had, so when you had your ICO, number one must have been pretty cool to be the first ICO on NEO, and then second, there was the whole China ICO ban going on around the same time, correct? That's right. How did you handle that? I mean, what was that like? Well, hey, it, it was not an easy situation uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, I was, you know, not a lot of things rattled me, but, uh, you know, that was kind of a situation that, you know, we had to think through uh, pretty carefully, and it's the reason why we postponed our ICO. Now, we still went forward with the ICO because RepPulse as a company has been incorporated in Hong Kong from the get-go. You know, from 2015, uh, when we first established the firm, it's always been a Hong Kong entity. But given that there were so many regulations coming out so, so quickly, so hot and heavy, we just wanted to make sure that we were, you know, abiding by all rules, all p policies, and that we're compliant. And after hiring a big four accounting firm, after hiring a Hong Kong law firm that went through our purchase agreements, went through our white paper, and the token sale itself, we were given the go-ahead, you know, we were given their blessing, and we moved forward with the token sale uh, about a month later on October 8th. Awesome. So how can people out there benefit from Red Pulse and also the Red Pulse token? Sure. The platform and the token. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways you can benefit. So as a contributor, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in, in any sort of field. In fact, if you are a casual market observer, if you are bilingual in Chinese and English, perhaps uh, English and Korean and Chinese, then you can already add a lot of value because what we're really playing upon here is the information asymmetry that exists between people that are in China and have access to a lot of these sources of information versus those that are outside of China. And given that China is such a massive economic opportunity, it's already number two in the world by GDP in terms of economic size, China is a big deal. And people need to better understand China you know, for a number of reasons. And so we found that this is a great platform to give those people that have some abilities to either translate or share some insights on China uh, a platform to speak and share those ideas and be compensated for it. That's great. So what's it like running Red Pulse? Red Pulse 
is is amazing uh and and running rep pulse is a daily challenge i would say but it's also very rewarding mm -hmm. uh the challenges abound i mean it's the same challenges as running a startup which you know i, I don't have to go through the laundry list of, of how difficult that is uh, getting a, a new platform off the ground but it's combined with the challenge of running a cryptocurrency based startup and given the daily volatility of the cryptocurrency space itself you know regulations that are changing seemingly on a weekly if not daily basis it, it just further um, exacerbates some of the difficulty there but at the same time very rewarding you know so the fact that we are so uh, much on the cutting edge of the development of new ecosystems that are founded upon cryptocurrency that's super exciting and all of my staff all of my team members super super excited to be a part of this that's great what what developments have you done since the ICO? What have you been up to? So in a word, platform. So we've been focused on platform development ever since we finished our token sale. And much of that is actually hiring. So hiring the right staff. You know, one of those things that we struggled with before we did the token sale was finding those right people, but also being able to compensate them at a, at a, at a value that was commensurate with their knowledge, with their skills, with their experience. Now that we are fully capitalized and are able to do so, we're, we're running full steam ahead, finding the right people, building the team that can then focus on building the platform. Well, since we're talking with people who may be awesome potential future team members, how can they find out about joining the team or how can they find out more information? Sure, absolutely. And, and thanks for the call out. Yeah, uh, so you can just go to our website, www.redpulse.com. And you can also send us an email at careers at redpulse.com. And we would love to speak to you. Now, is the Red Pulse platform, is that available for people to use all over the world or is it pretty much primarily for people in China? It's actually targeting um, initially people outside of China. Mm -hmm. So the platform, at least even before we tokenized it, is primarily used by financial institutions, corporates that are global, that are outside of China looking to better understand uh, localized Chinese market dynamics so they can make better business decisions and better investment decisions. Mm, that's great. Now, you're going to be talking later today that's right. at Neo DevCon. <laughs> So um, anything that you're going to be sharing there at Neo DevCon that you'd like people at home who may not be here to know about? Yeah, so a, a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing at the initial side of my presentation is going to be pretty common, you know, stuff that I've shared in the past, but I, I wanted to set that common tone uh, for people in the audience that weren't as familiar with Red Pulse. But later in the presentation, I'm going to be focusing more on sharing economy. So everyone talks about sharing economy these days, and there's tons of these you know, unicorn, decacorn companies that have built this business upon the idea of a sharing economy. But I want to use the example of a cryptocurrency-based sharing economy as a new way of building that, that sort of business model. And it's going to be pretty interesting. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Awesome. So another thing, uh, I just saw you talking with Da Hong Fei. And in fact, I got a picture with both of them. <laughs> but I got a picture with you I and Dong Fei. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that must be really great to have like a working relationship with him and be able to just communicate. Absolutely. Yeah, it's one of the key reasons why we decided to partner with Neo and OnChain in building out this platform together. It's that accessibility and willingness to open, uh, openly work together and collaborate on some of these new ecosystems and business models. And that's, that's super helpful um, because... If, if you look at some of the other blockchain platforms, you know, you, you of course can build on those platforms as well. Um, but, you know, whether it's because we're also in Asia, also based in, in greater China, perhaps that provides us with more access. But it is access that is really critical to what we're looking to do. And having access to not only Da Hongfei, Tony Tao, uh, Johnson, and, and the rest of the, uh, the Neo Core dev team has been pretty critical in us being able to achieve what we're looking to do. Yeah. Another question I had. So uh, how... Because China does sometimes have regulations that affect things, and uh, how do you prepare for that coming up in the future? Do you think, is that going to affect you, or what do you well, have looking at? Well, you know, I, I always go back to the old saying, you know, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Mm -hmm. So we certainly aren't sticking our heads in the sand and just hoping everything just works out, you know, fine. So we've, we've looked at different scenarios that might play out in different market jurisdictions and have incorporated that into our business strategy. So I can't go into all the details of that, but we are making sure that this is going to be a viable, successful business model for many years to come. Mm -hmm. Great. And talking about these upcoming times, what do you have planned in the roadmap? 
so roadmap, uh, which is by the way, you know, fully uh, accessible on our website, you know, so you can you can hold us to it. Uh, so for the first half of 2018, we're going to be focused on building out the new platform, of course. And the first step towards that is to transition our old LAMP stack, you know, very old school stack, into a Drupal Django based uh, web framework. And the second step beyond that is to create a feed system for all of our current research. So using a, an API, uh, pr probably a REST API, to allow financial institutions to directly plug into that feed of information. And then following that, we'll start incorporating the RPX as the actual compensation mechanism. And that will probably come later in uh, second half of 2018. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an exciting year. Very exciting. Yeah. Do you find do you find that things move very very quickly in cryptocurrency, like so quick that it's hard to even keep up with it? So, incredibly quickly. Um, but I wouldn't say it's hard to keep up with. It's just something that you have to get used to. Mm -hmm. So, having been in this space as a crypto project for. I would say less than six months. You know, I almost feel like I'm, I'm one of the old guard. You know, you know I, I see these other projects come about, uh, and and I t I tend to feel like, oh, okay, well, you know, that sounds like they're they're doing pretty well. But come to think of it, you know, I look back. When did we first start with the idea of creating a cryptocurrency-based uh, research platform? It wasn't even that long ago, and it just really shows how quickly things move. You just have to adjust your own planning, adjust your own execution to tr to to match that as well. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yeah, well, it's an absolute pleasure talking with you, and we're going to be wrapping up soon. But I want to ask, anything else that you'd like everyone in the world to know? No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Yeah, so I, I just want to thank everyone out there for your consistent support of Red Pulse and, and also RPX. Uh, we can't do any of this without you guys. So continue supporting us. We'll continue uh, sending out communications, letting you guys know what we're up to, what's our progress, and we're going to make big things happen with Red Pulse. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, it's, it's good. I think we're, we may have a little bit more. Are we good to go? Or? Oh, OK, so guys. Stay tuned, because coming up next, first I want to say thank you so much, Jonathan. It has no been an absolute pleasure. An Mich absolute pleasure. Absolutely. Same here. Yeah. And coming up next, we have my man Crypto Bud with City of Zion.